We're in Northern California, heading to the IFR gym. I mean, I know this is like lifting weights, believe me. There's nothing about this that's supposed to be easy. Right. The idea here is to push you to the edges of your ability to multitask. Multitasking is a muscle. So when we go to the gym today, we're gonna fly this Oscar pattern, and the point of it for you is to kind of get you back to that saturation point wherever it is. When are we clear to start? Well, if you're feeling like you understand it, <laughs> let's do it, man. And although I managed to barely hang in there, yeah, so you're starting to fall behind the Oscar pattern a little bit. Clearly, I'm out of shape. All right, dude, so it's been a while, right, for you. And the thing that's funny about you is you pretty much have the skills. You just have to take the written test and get your skills back intact, right? That's where you are. This episode is aimed at anyone working on or already holding an instrument rating. So we're gonna get pretty av geeky with this one. For more epic flying and ridiculous aircraft and more story-driven episodes, please visit flightjobs.com for the back catalog. It's all curated there. Let's talk about the scan real quick. What's your radial or what, what do you recommend? All right, so when you're just flying level, I recommend a radial scan, which centers the attitude indicator. And I would think of the song Staying Alive. You know that song? Yep. That's how fast your eyes should be moving. AI, airspeed. AI, turn coordinator. AI, heading. AI, vertical. So, bam, bam, bam. And then when you roll into a turn, like give me now a right turn heading south, then you're using what we call the inverted V. Standard rate, sight picture, vertical speed. Sight picture, standard rate. The key is to fly it the same way you fly VFR. That's a sight picture. That attitude indicator is like someone took a hole saw and drilled through the front of the airplane. The trick is, it's your entire window shrunk into two and a half inches. So you have to see it in minutia. You have to see the white line right there, that orange ball dropped a little, right? That has to be visual. And the other thing I would tell you is, just as an exercise here, do this for me. Fly without your hands, trim it up, and just use your right foot on a heading of south. There you go, like that. Perfect. Awesome. And now I'm gonna run the first flow check. We've got a heading of south. That almost matches, but there's south. Oil pressure, oil temperature, ammeter, vacuum, all look good. You can turn off the taxi light for me. Power's where we want it, fuel's where we want it. Back, coming. And then if you have the written checklist. But in a single pilot world, I think checklists are one of the most misunderstood and misused tools that we have. The checklist is there specifically to provide redundancy. Jason is all about standardization and redundancy. We'll expand on this a bit later. All right, look good. And you got the right, nice trim dialed in. Beautiful. It's important to note this entire flight took place in VMC conditions. And of course, as with all my videos, please don't consider this training content, but rather the start to a conversation that you can finish with your instructor. So when I see this picture, I see the white light bisecting the orange ball almost in half and that's giving you 85 knots. But it's that picture that's primary, everything else is sort of data that supports it. Pitch plus power will give us performance, whether it's a window or an AI or a G1000 or whatever. Yeah, you talk about aiming small, like that orange dot is like the size of the head of a pencil and you're talking about cutting it in half. Right, that's the challenge of that tiny little instrument. So let's go left to a heading of south. On the board, I drew us with an orderly start, but where we are today, we're gonna start on the heading of south, but it's the same thing. I'll just fly the cardinal headings at each corner of the Oscar pattern. We're gonna get you back close to a saturation point, wherever that is. It's like that juggler with all the balls in the air. You're doing great until that one ball comes that takes the whole house down. Right, that's I always tell my instrument students, there's gonna come a point where I ask you, what's your name, and you're gonna tell me to stand by. So one thing I can tell you for sure about the Oscar pattern, the goal is at some point you sort of feel disoriented, and what we're trying to do is figure out where is that point. That's saturation. Um, and saturation is great for two things. One, for the real world, because when you get out there and start flying single pilot IFR, you, you are going to have those moments where there's too much going on. But it's also good for a check ride because the examiner is sort of looking to find where is that point? Like, where does this guy fall apart? So now that you're in the airplane and your processor is spinning a little bit, how do you feel about remembering the Oscar pattern? <laughs> do you remember? We have oh. like a, a start gun that goes off. So, we, so let me see if I got it right. All so right. the start gun's gonna go off. I'm gonna start a timer. I'm gonna fly my heading of south for 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna start rate one 360 climbing. To the right. And I'm, I'm gonna restart my timer for that. No, you're just gonna do the math in your head. It's because the rate one turn is a two minute. Exactly, and then, and then you'll have 30 seconds to clean it up, then you'll be needing to make a right turn to a heading of west, and then you have 30 seconds before you start the descending left. Okay, what the heck is this Oscar pattern thing? Thanks to Clatahoy, which is legit my favorite debriefing tool, we're able to get a pretty good look at it and how it went. But here's how it's supposed to work. You're at some altitude, clear of airspace, the starting gun goes off and you fly straight north for 30 seconds. At the end of 30 seconds, we're gonna initiate a climbing right turn. The turn should be made at a standard rate and 500 feet per minute. 
So if you remember, a standard rate turn is a two minute circle. Right, it says that right on the turn coordinator. If you're climbing at 500 feet per minute, we should now be 1,000 feet higher when you roll out on north again. But in reality, it doesn't work that way. You might get to north and still have an extra 300 feet to go. So this next 30 seconds is an opportunity for you to bring those variables back together, clean it up, and then you turn right to a heading of east, and you have 30 seconds to prepare for the next event, which is going to be a descending left turn. Same thing. Standard rate turn, at the end of two minutes, we should be back down 1,000 feet lower. 30 seconds to clean it up. Then you turn south, and this, you know, at this point, after 30 seconds, we're going to do a climbing left turn. So all of this, to some extent, is just some arbitrary exercise for you to kind of get you doing something specific. When are we clear to start? Well, if you're feeling like you understand it, <laughs> let's do it, man. I'm not really at a great altitude here that's even, but do we care? Um, do we get to four, then start it? That'll make your brain less task saturated. Yeah, let's get up to four, because every little thing that's not like an even number that your brain has to calculate will task saturate your brain. Again, that's the goal. I mean, that's what we're trying to get to is when, when the balls all fall. Cladahoy recently added the Oscar pattern among the flight segments that it can automatically recognize. I'll be cutting back and forth between this visualization of the debrief to help you follow along. All right, want to start? Yeah, let's do it, because the first 30 is uh, pretty benign. So okay, let's so hit that thing. All right, good. Now, we have 30 seconds, but we're technically in the Oscar pattern here. You know what you're doing at the end of 30, right? Starting a climbing right one turn to the right. Yep. I'm going to not stop the timer. I'm just going to do it. Good. Okay, so stable, everything is stable. I got 10 seconds to go. Okay, I got five seconds to go. We're clear to make a turn to the right? We are. There okay, we go. So we're going to pitch, power, start a turn, rate one. Had I been correctly doing my inverted V scan, I'd have caught this error. 500 feet per minute is your target. So that initial zoom was just because of the ble bleeding off airspeed situation, right? Yep, and you weren't looking at rate. Good, and can you get a flow check in? So this flow check that I've developed is a lightning bolt shape, uh, starting at the magnetic compass, moving down to the heading indicator to make sure that you have the right heading. So mag compass to heading indicator, over to the engine gauges to make sure that everything's operating properly. Along here to see if lights, pitot heat, anything triggers your brain, throttle, prop, mixture, anything that needs to happen there. And then down to the fuel, just using your brain, just thinking about it. Is there anything I need to be doing? And then as a separate thing, quickly pick up a list and power and mixture instruments or can just verify that you did it. And that gives you the redundancy. Trying to, to develop a habit where you're really looking at this stuff often. So ideally, I would like that to be part of your foundation. How's your uh, oil pressure, oil temperature relationship? That looks good. Good check in on your vertical speed. At low. And the power mixture relationship? We never, we never, should we have ridged for yeah, climb? Yeah, I think so, probably, there you go, full ridge for the climb. That's okay. why we do these flows, we're in a climb now. But I want to talk about how important it is to keep up with mixture management and how important it is to look at the engine. And that if you're not doing something like that flow check checklist, odds are you're ignoring it. Right. Good, and all the way down to the floor, how's the fuel? Feels where we left it. Good, and I don't think you have time, but if you had time, what I'd like you to see at the end of the day here is to back that up for redundancy, and you'll get there. The more you do those, the more uh, expeditious they become. For each climb, for each level off, for each descent, for each level off, I'd like to see you do a flow check followed by a written checklist so that your instincts, what we're trying to build is that foundation. We're doing two things, pushing you closer to the saturation, but also building your instincts. Every time you enter a climb, you kind of run through your flow check, quick checklist, checklist complete. Should take less than 10 seconds if you're doing it a lot. My rate one turn should be ending at 2.30, is that That's correct? That's correct, yeah, and you should be 1,000 feet higher than where you started at that point. Yeah, so we're close. Yeah, good. Remember when you level off at like another cruise flow because you're going to be leaning the mixture at that point, right? Yeah. So let's stop here. There's the heading. So we're a little bit low. Good. Nice job on the turn. Get up there. Bird. No, get up there. Get up to oh, five. Okay. You got 30 seconds to clean this up. So by three minutes, you need to be making a right turn to a heading of west. But let's get up to five, level off, and do a flow check. Okay, so flow check. Correct. And lean. Yeah. Let's I mean, really? Up. Yeah, absolutely. Just. Yep, there it goes, good. And it's going fast. Nice. All right, so three minutes, I'm supposed to be where I'm at. Good, now turn right to heading west. Now we're going around the corner. So that happens fast. Yeah, watch 5,000. At 3.30, you need to be starting a descending left-hand spiral. 
No, sorry. Did I do that wrong? Yeah, no, so at 3.30 I hold 30 seconds straight. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Okay, nice. so I got there four seconds early. So um, I didn't change anything because we're still level. Good. So I'm just going to do a flow check. Good. Now just specifically according to my drill, I wouldn't require a flow check there because we didn't change altitude or configuration. Okay. All you did was turn. So there's nothing to be done with power or cowl flaps or that kind of thing. All you did was turn. And at four minutes, I'm going to start my descending left-hand turn. Right. Now that would require a flow check because it's a descent and something I presumably should be happening with the power and the mixture. Right. So when we're descending, you're Mr. Rich? Well, you'd think about the mixture depending on what altitude okay. so you're on. So we're here. Good. So let's start it, power out, and start your descending left. How far out do you pull it? Just... Uh, 500 feet per minute. So 500 RPM? No, we'll pitch to the vertical speed power. Did we check to make sure you're clear? Yep, you're clear. On a uh, flight test, you fail if you don't ask the examiner to check, right? You could potentially, yes, for sure. Watch your rate on your turn. There you go, good. Oh, the rate, turn rate you mean, or descent rate? Yeah, turn rate, good. Okay. Now let's see if we can get through a descent flow. Yeah, flow would be, well, that's not going to really be something I can check. Engine's good. Cross. And we're going to go rich? Yeah, we're going to enrich in a little bit. And it's supposed to be turning to uh, east, correct? Uh, west. What? You were heading west and you started a left-hand circle, so we'd like to end up back on. Oh, we're going 360. Right. This is the corner. Yeah, that's the hard part. Remember what part of the thing you're on. That's right. And if we weren't on cardinal headings, that would be even harder, right? Totally. I use this as a specific tool to give you big muscles, and it's, it's, it's easy to understand in its form. And there are a lot of ways we can make it harder or increase the intensity without changing the basic form of the exercise. Uh, at six minutes, you should be back on west. Okay, so you're keeping track of the math of where we're at in the thing. Well, ideally, you would be, but yeah, I am. <laughs> I mean, this is all about pushing you towards saturation, right? The stuff we talked about on the ground. You're juggling balls now. So now would we're be leveling off at west. Not Correct. leveling off, though. You need to be, you're stopping Sorry. at west, but your vertical speed didn't make it. You need to be down at 4,000, right? So I didn't finish my descent? You did not. Okay, so I have 30 seconds to... You do, but at 6.30 you turn right to heading up north. And this level off would require a flow check to readjust mixture. When you get to 4, that is. Okay, and I'm supposed to make a turn right then and there. Yeah, so you're starting to fall behind the Oscar pattern a little bit. There's 6.30, so go right to heading up north. And stop the descent? Yeah, good. And this is your clean, you know, we, we flew right through the clean up there, and now you have 30 seconds to prepare. There you go, good. And ideally, you'd do that in a flow check, and it would be redundant. I mean, I know this is like lifting weights, believe me. There's nothing about this that's supposed to be easy. Right. The idea here is to push you to the edges of your ability to multitask. Multitasking is a muscle. Now I can't remember. I guess now I'm going north, so now I'm at a point where I go level for 30, or straight and level for 30 seconds, then I begin a climbing spiral. Yeah. All right, well, so we're 10 seconds behind. I'm supposed to start that climbing spiral in eight seconds, correct? Yep. And we're at the right altitude, more or less, off by 100. Yep. I didn't have time to do my check. I guess I'm gonna have to just go for it. All so right. we're going for the climb now. Um, and here's what I think about standardization is that it gives you a license to improvise. This is the way you always do it. When you enter a climb, you always do your flow check and you always pick up a checklist, but reserve the right to say, I don't have time to back it up right now. I'm just going to do the flow check. I'm going to call an audible and that's okay. It's like a pressure release valve. If, if the way you do it is always that way and then every now and again you make an exception consciously, that's okay because you have that standardization and you're not just degrading. See if you can get through your climb flow. I bet it'll happen faster this time. And then I pull it through. Nice, and hold it up here to the data you want to hold. Yeah, so I did my turn going, got my climb going. Climb, airspeed, throttle mixture. That's a really short list, but awesome. okay. But we, you're we developing have... a redundant procedure that lives with you. So next time you fly, or when you finally do fly your Spitfire, right? That'll be your instinct. Where's my flow? Where's my checklist? Yep. I'm supposed to finish this turn at 8, no, at, at 8.30? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, we started at 7.30, so 9.30. Good, and you're already through your flow check and checklist. Do you see how you're already getting a little faster yeah. just by being here in the gym? You're getting a little stronger. Try to keep it standard rate. I know it's tempting to catch up, but in IFR, you want to avoid spatial disorientation. Try to hold the standard rate. Yeah, so I feel like I'm doing better with the climb rate this time. Yes, you are. So we're supposed to be at north and 5,000 at 9.30. Uh, so, yes, so I was a little, I was a little fast on that turn, but yeah, you were beyond standard rate for a few, for a bit there, yeah. But nice job on the uh, altitudes, looking much better, and you have time here to clean it up, right? You're getting back ahead. Hold north there. Don't lose north. A flow check. Got where I want it. Pull this out. Nice. <laughs> crumpled it. <laughs> oh, it's so crumpled. Powers. Okay. 
Yeah, well, so did you though? Did you actually lean the mixture for 5,000? I never touched it. It's been rich the whole time. Right, but that's my point. You just leveled off. You did a flow check and a checklist, but you failed to lean the mixture for 5,000 feet level. Right. Uh, it's 10 minutes. Let's start the right turn to east. And I think that's a really important point. So, that I so make. what am I doing with this? Oh, this is my 90 degree turn? Yep, you're going back I'm to staying, east. I'm staying level. Yep, you're yeah. level at five. Yeah, so you that's one of those things where I was rushing and I touched it, but I didn't think of what I was supposed to do with it. Right, and then you backed it up and you still didn't occur to you, right? So the, th the tough part about standardization is forcing yourself to really just not like blow through it in a rote way. Like when you look at oil pressure temperature, you kind of have to like force yourself to be like, wait a minute, I see oil pressure and it's in the green. One of my mentors would never let me say engine gauge is good. I had to say oil pressure good, oil temperature good, vacuum good, ammeter good. Right, like each one individually, because if I just said gauge is green, he'd say, what the heck are you talking about? Gauge right. is green. What, did you really look at that? Here's Cloud Ahoy sped up 10 times. Things finally started coming together for this last descending 360, and I felt fully on board. I mean, look at that, dude. Seconds, so that yeah. is just magic. Yeah. 13 east and four. Woo. Yeah. Beautiful. And then uh, cruise flow check for the lean. Make sure you start here. Check your mag compass. You're, you're flying okay. 100 now, so just fix that. You're flying the wrong heading. 100, get back to a heading of east. How's your engine? Go through each one. Okay, so start over. That's good. That's set now. Engine temperature and pressure is good. Good. Lean We're that lean. Nice. There it is, and a right turn back to south. We're That's at we're 1330. Yeah. Yep. And that ends your Oscar pattern. Jesus. How about that, right? How many times do you go through this with a student, typically? Many, many different times. We use it as, it gets harder and harder here. Let me show you. Can I put on the foggles and show you what it looks like in its most extreme form? Sure. All yeah, right. You got him. I got it. All right, so you've got the, uh, you're looking for traffic and stuff, right? Yep, sunglasses are going on. Can you use a piece of paper and cover the vacuum gauges for me? In, in an extreme world, like before you were ready for a check ride, I would have you doing this partial panel off north with 15 second legs and briefing and approach. Okay, you got no uh, attitude, right. no heading. All right, and I'm gonna start on a heading that's off south. You're gonna brief approach also while you're doing this? Yeah, that's the next thing, dude. All that is just like trying to think about that while you fly pushes you closer to that saturation point. Make no mistake about it, that saturation point is a muscle. It's not something you have or don't have, it's something you can work on and build. So at the end of the day, what I'd want you to be able to do now, I'll show you the one trick that I would sort of allow if a student wanted this. All right, I would take some instrument in the airplane that I'm not using and set it up so I don't have to do the math. All I have to do is the compass turns, right, on Raj. those things? Yep. All right, so here we're going to start this over. I've got 30 seconds to make sure that I'm on a heading of 150. Good. Uh, you've got the paper checklist. Yep. All right, so right turn to heading 240. The compass is going to lead by 20. All right, here we go. Climbing right turn, that's standard rate. Pitching up 500 feet. We've got magnetic compass, oil temperature, oil pressure, vacuum, ammeter, lights are the way we want them. Mixture should be rich. And we climb, airspeed throttle mixture. Checklist is complete. We've got 1,000 feet to go in this turn. I'm just doing a right 360 now, so I'm gonna brief the Arnage GPS Yankee for runway 30 approach. The final approach course today is gonna to be two, nine, or seven. The touchdown zone elevation is five. And at this point, we're actually somewhere close to reality, to what it feels like to be alone up there in the IFR system. The missed approach, climbing left turn to 5,400 direct Amabi, and hold, continue the climb in the hold to 5,400. All right, that's a one minute turn. We should be coming through north, and we are. The ATIS is on 125.9er, NorCal on 1339er5, San Carlos on 119er.0, that's our tower. All right, so we're gonna get close to our level off here. I'm gonna pause the briefing, and we're actually gonna see what happened after a two minute turn. Your max weight always feels like your max weight. If you're able to lift it, it just feels like there I am at max. You don't know you're getting stronger. The Oscar pattern is great for that because there are a number of things that we can modify to keep you close to that point, even as your skills get better. Notice I'm trying to hold the briefing up so that I can see standard rate and 500 feet per minute. We started the turn at 30 seconds, so I'm just gonna arbitrarily do a two minute turn here, then see what the compass says and use my last 30 seconds to clean it up. So we're coming up on 5,000 at 230 and standard rate. All right, there's 5,000 feet, so I can actually level off. Here comes a two minute turn, so I'm just gonna hold the standard rate turn for a second. All right, there's the level off, there's 230, so I'm gonna go turn coordinator level, power back for the level off a little bit, 
And then once the turn coordinator's level, I'm going to see what it says. It says 160, so I have to clean that up a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, I'll do a flow. No heading indicator, oil temperature, oil pressure, vacuum, amps, lights are good. Mixture, we'll just go ahead and lean out a little bit. Here comes our turn, cruise, power, mixture, trim, checklist complete. There's right to a heading of 240, which on the compass is going to lead by 20. So 20 ahead is going to be 260. When the compass says 260, I'll be there. I run the inverted V scan in the turn, even though there's no attitude to look at, because it helps me hold the 5,000. Here comes 240 on the compass. The compass is leading, so we're going to go to 260 and roll wings level. All right, there's 30 seconds. The turn should be complete, but we're not. Let's go to 260 a little bit. The compass is leading, probably about that much. Then we go turn coordinator, wings level. Let's see what the compass says. Compass says 260. We're on heading. We'll have to four minutes. Let's finish that briefing. The plan view says... Did you catch Jason's error? If you didn't, that's cool. We're just about to debrief it. And here we are at four minutes. Let's start our descending left. Power back. You said compass was going to be leading, but was that only during the turn? Once you level off, should it have gone back to 2400? Um, I was looking for, oh, 24, right, uh, 26. Did I, is that what I held, 26? It did hold 26. All right, so you caught my error. Uh, but you get the idea. What I'm trying to show you is the Oscar pattern is an adaptable procedure that no matter how good you get, we can find something to keep you in that feeling you had today. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Huge thanks to Patreon supporters and sponsors for helping us create this content. And huge thanks to Jason for being a part of it. Search the finer points to find him or check for his link in the description. And please visit flightchops.com for a curated back catalog. And of course, as always, keep your flight chops sharp. So go under the foggles here. Let me uh, get the whole thing dialed up. Are you serious <laughs> right now? <laughs> That ain't gonna work. Hold on, I wanna show you, I wanna, first of all, I wanna see if I can still do this. <laughs>